15 years ago, I was living in Toronto, Canada. And I was living in an apartment on my own. I was a very healthy, active, sports-minded guy. But one day, I woke up feeling very old. got out of my bed and I could not even walk. I had to struggle to get to the kitchen sink or to the bathroom. And I said, this is, this is strange. I'm, I'm a fit guy. I, this, is, this must be passing. I, can, I can't believe this is happening to me because this lingered. And I sat down again and I said, it'll pass. And I get up when it passes. So I sat down, took a deep breath, and I tried getting up, and I tried walking fast. And my heart went wild. It, I felt it was going to burst. I had to hold it. And I sat back down again to make it rest. And I said, this is, this is something that I have not gone through. I didn't even, I didn't even have a doctor that I go to on a regular basis then. So I said, let it pass for today and I'll go tomorrow to a doctor. But even the next day, I did not go to the doctor thinking it will go away. You know how I am, you know, I I put off going to the hospital as much as I can. It was on the third day that I finally said, okay, this is not going to go away. My heart would go wild if I forgot that there was something wrong with me. I'd some, you know, over the three days, I sometimes would forget that, hey, I'm not well. And if I started walking fast or if I got out of my chair quickly, normally the heart would just go wild. And on top of that, I was feeling very weak. I was not able to hold on to, to walls, to walk. So I finally went into a chemist shop and I said, look, I need a GP. Can you recommend me one? Because there in Canada, in the United States, you have to have some doctor assigned to you and you then under his in his roles you can't just walk into any doctor's clinic like you do here so he said yeah i have one here go upstairs it's right about his name is kralka a czech guy i said thank you i'll do that so i showed up at dr kralka's clinic a very good man very, very distinguished man. And he immediately just ushered me into his office and he said, what's wrong? How can I help you? I said, Dr. Krauka, I've not come to see you before. I'm usually a very healthy guy. There's something wrong with me. I can't, I'm not my usual self. And he immediately sensed that I was not well and that I was seriously suffering from something. So he made me lie down on this patient thing. He did some knock, knock my knees, knock my chest, knock my feet. And then he said, I have to take a blood test. And I said, okay. So he got his nurse and had my blood test taken. And then he said, the results of this blood test will only be available tomorrow you have to come back. I said, okay. So I made my way back home slowly. It had started snowing at that time as well. I made my way back home slowly, rested that day. The next day I came back to it. Luckily, his, all these, you know, Canada, Toronto is a fantastic place to live. Doctors, everything is very clear, very near. I had to, I had to 
didn't have to walk far. But when I came back the next day, he said, Jairam, there is something seriously wrong with you. You have what is known as hyperthyroidism. The thyroid gland is overactive to a very great extent. And it's secreting its hormones so much so that you're that you feel as if you're an old man. And that was true, I was feeling as if I was an old man. So he said, you either have to get yourself operated or the uh, prescribed iodine for the rest of your life. He said that would probably be the case. But I can't do anything right now. You have to see Dr. Robert Silver, who's in Toronto Western Hospital. He's an endocrinologist, and you have to take an appointment with him. I said, okay, I'll take an appointment. I will get you the appointment, Dr. Kralka said. And, but you'll have to wait for two weeks. I said, two weeks in this condition? It's impossible, I'm gonna die. He said, look, you know, at that time, 2000, 2000, uh, 2003, at that time, Toronto was going through a SARS epidemic. SARS was, a respiratory disease that was <laughs> Toronto, Canada was experiencing it more than any other city. It was going through that epidemic, and uh, don't but don't worry, you don't have SARS, <laughs> you you have hyperthyroidism. I said, oh, no one knows, you know. I mean, I thought I had SARS as well, but anyway. So I had to wait two weeks to uh, see Doctor Silver, Doctor Robert Silver, in Toronto. In the meanwhile, he said, don't come to me if anything goes wrong. Go to an emergency hospital, to, to the hospital and the emergency section. I can't do anything for you now. And I said, oh my God, how am I going to live in this condition for two, two weeks? So anyway, I went home and I lay down and somehow managed to get through that day and the shock of, really, it was serious. I had written my will out, <laughs> thinking that I was gonna die. Obviously, I haven't died, but I had written my will out. The next day, I had to go to the University of Toronto Library to research something. And the University of Toronto Library is a huge, huge building, and there are several floors, and the first three floors you go up and down by escalator, you can. And the other floors you go by the lift, by the elevators, by the lift. But I was coming down from the second floor to the first floor on the escalator. And in the University of Toronto, every month or so, there's, there's an exhibit that they, that they hold on different topics. That, that particular month, they were holding an exhibit on Portugal and its culture. But anyway, as I was coming down this escalator, I was holding on to both the rails, and I heard a whisper. And the whisper did not, did not come out from any particular source. The whisper came out from everywhere. And the whisper said, you'll be okay. Even in my weak state, I said, wow, this is something. And as I was coming down that escalator, you know, I said that, University of Toronto has different exhibits. There was one little display, and the first thing I saw as I was coming down this escalator was a statue of the Virgin Mary. I've always liked the Virgin Mary. I like, you know, I'm, I'm devoted to her. I like the Divine Mother, the, 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 the power of the Divine Mother. And 
I just I went up to her and I said, did you say that? <laughs> did you whisper it? And she, of course, didn't say anything. And I walked away from that library, having researched what I wanted to do. And I went back to my home. The next day, I was went out for a walk again. And my house was next to an Anglican church. And that church had a little sign. Uh, that day had a sign outside. You know one of those A boards that, that on the street that say jumble sale. So it had that sign. And I said, oh my God, this jumble sale here. There might, there might be some good stuff. Even though I thought I was going to die, I was still wanting to go in and buy some trinkets. I said, let me put it in my will. I'll go in. I walked in. And it was a dark hall. And there were these tables laid in that room. And all kinds of trinkets, junks, you know, little jewelry, wine glasses, paintings, everything just left there for people to buy and donate to the church. I didn't like anything. I went around each table. I, uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. I walked. I was walking out again, but in the corner of my eye, I saw this huge picture of Mother Durga. Durga sitting on a tiger, holding all those weapons. I said, what is this doing in the church? And I told myself, it must be some cynical Indian lady who got converted to Christianity and who left this in the church out of spite. And I said, this can't be here. I have to take this. If I go, I'll at least put it and give it to my temple. I can't leave this to go to seed. I can't leave this to decay. So I, I went up to that. I picked that up, even though I was feeling weak. And I took it to the cash counter. And the lady there said, oh, I never thought this was going to sell, you know. And well, I said, this is sold now. Tell me how much do you want. She said, no, no, you take it away, take it away. I said, no, I want to pay you for it. She said, look, at $5. I gave her $5. And I took it home. I hobbled home with it. Took it to my apartment. And I placed it in my shrine. I have a little shrine where I meditate every day. Placed it in my shrine. And I saw it. It was very nice. And believe it or not, people, the next day I woke up. I said, I'm okay today. I am okay. You know, usually when I did this, my heart would go. <laughs> It didn't do anything. I'm okay. I walked out. It was sunny. And I saw my friend. And I ran to him. I said, hey, wait a minute. You're running. Don't run. There's something. But I was okay. Now, I had my appointment with Dr. Robert Silver, as I said. And I didn't want to make him feel that I was playing cookie, as they say. That I was not keeping the appointment, having made the appointment. He's a very busy man. He was an endocrinologist, world famous endocrinologist, endocrinologist. And I made my appointment. And I told him, Dr. Silva, I'm okay. You don't have to do anything for me. He says, good. I've seen your blood results, your T1 or TH, whatever. They, they're way above normal. You're deluding yourself. Very, very sincere man, you know. Very, very nice man. He says, I can't let you go like this. I said, Dr. Robert Silver, I'm okay. You can, you know, you can check me out. He said, okay, I'll take your blood test again. I said, okay, take my blood test again. And I'll call you again tomorrow. You better be here. I said, okay. So he took my blood test again. He didn't call me the next day, but he called me two days later. I wasn't in. He left a message on my machine saying, Mr. Shishadri, you're okay. What did you do? <laughs> I called him back and I said, Dr. Silva, I was doing yoga. Don't worry. 
I didn't want to tell him. I heard a voice say, you'll be okay. That's my story.